Welcome back Automation Nation. Today we're going to look at this 3D printed house by Smart Build. It's fairly unique and certainly not for boring walls. Designed by Mensa Corte. You may recognize that name. It's the same architecture firm behind some of the 3D printed buildings in Germany which I've filmed and toured also with their head architects now. My name is Jared Gross and I'm a citizen journalist who travels the world filming 3D printed construction projects, documenting the evolution of construction technology across my social media channels at Automate Construction. At this point, my channel is fully self-supported with no external sponsorships and I do that to ensure I can deliver the best construction news to you in an unbiased fashion, unlike any other media outlet you know. Of course, nobody can be truly fully unbiased, but by not having sponsors, it makes it a heck of a lot easier. Financing to fund my travels and journalism comes from my private community, The Automation Nation, and my course, How to 3D Print a House, which I've just added two new sections to, including how to pick a printer. If you're interested in either of those things, check them out in the link below. Otherwise, let's get back to the video. For this print, Smart Build is using a gantry system on rails. The rails or track system allow it to navigate the y-axis, which can be as long as they like. Instead of a complicated auger and hopper at the extruder head, this system just uses a straight pipe to deposit each layer. Printing with a straight pipe extruder head allows them to easily tackle the corners and angles because there's no u-axis rotation at the tip of the extruder. Like all kinds of 3D printing, it may not look fast second to second, but Smart Build said they're able to print 45 centimeters in 6 hours. These layers look about 2, maybe 2.5 two centimeters tall, so that 6 hour print time gives you about 18 layers. The bottom of the section we're looking at now looks substantially worse than the rest of the print, to be honest. Things don't always go perfectly, but the first layers, the printer is able to smooth itself out fairly quickly if you slow it down because the extruder stays extremely level. You can also push the material into the center if you're unhappy with the finish and go back and do it again. They'll have to backfill portions of the base of the wall at least, sometimes the entire height of the wall. So having a little bit of material in there is almost like recycling. This house features some unique parametric designs which I always like to see rather than just a flat wall. It shows off the printer is able to do creative things that would be kind of challenging by hand. Emulating this shape with traditional molds or formwork would require a one-off that might have to be CNC'd. It would be tremendously expensive, but the printer doesn't mind at all. Notice how the exterior is much lower than the slab. That's an interesting feature. I wonder if the wall was printed before or after the slab was poured. Perhaps they might have used it as formwork. You can see some small minor aesthetic cracking in the walls, but it's a very good sign that they aren't extending the full vertical height of the wall. Let's take another look at those parametric designs. You can also get a glimpse of the rail system, which seems very robust. This wall demonstrates an incline, which is an overhang of perhaps a couple degrees. If you look at the arrow on the screen, you can see the dual bond epoxy layer that they put between a dry layer and a fresh new layer to ensure they get a strong monolithic structure rather than a weak cold joint. The printer navigates these tight radii with ease. It has maybe slight vibration if you look very closely at the nozzle, but it's not showing up much. You can see maybe a little wavy pattern in some layers. It, for the most part, it's very rigid, very consistent and I'm wondering what they're going to finish the house with. I would leave the layers raw, but everybody has their own opinions on the aesthetics. All of the exterior corners of the wall feature big sweeping curves, as opposed to the interior, which features corners. This was probably a smart design choice because it's tough to do interior design and furniture with big rounded corners everywhere. Having 90 degree angles somewhere will make things like the kitchen and having other furniture around much simpler. This is a look at some more recycling in the wall and also the plumbing which they put directly through the slab as opposed to between the interior of the printed wall. They installed the electrical boxes during the print. 
it's very easy to remove a small section of the printed layer when it's still wet as opposed to needing to cut it when it hardens, especially because it's a very strong mortar, usually around 6,000 PSI. So by taking advantage of the opportunity when it's wet and cutting away a slice, you can make installing electrical boxes very quick and simple. After the wall is done, an electrician will feed the wire through directly from the top. Install on the horizontal reinforcement is also quite simple. You really just place it there in the wet mortar. Between these two conjoined walls on the right, they also have some of the same material being used as a vertical reinforcement. Let's see what happens when the printer gets to navigating around that vertical reinforcement extending above its height. One thing to note, when you're dealing with innovative companies, especially technology and construction, they're going to be doing lots of R&D testing new things because it's such a new field. And by nature, some of these new things they try may not work. Every single group is trying new things on every single project. Now things are really starting to take shape. They've printed maybe a foot and a half above the slab level, which remember is another foot and a half above the ground level. It's cool how unique each home can be. It doesn't require extensive customization by hand because the machine handles it all. What customizations would you feature in the concrete of your house? You have to be sure you're going to like it because it'll be tough to change. Now is a good time to note that this is probably a mortar, not a concrete. And to 99% of people, it doesn't make a difference. It's basically the size of the rocks that you put in the mix. Mortar like this uses smaller aggregates like sand as opposed to concrete which has aggregates with printed concrete as large as 0.8 centimeters. You will very often hear mortar misnomered as concrete, perhaps just because 3D printed concrete house sounds a little better than 3D printed mortar house. Either way, these are some really great shots in the sunset from this print. I have to give huge credit to Smart Build for getting this terrific footage and sending it to me. I wouldn't have been able to make this video otherwise as I'm not able to travel to this region at the moment. In an effort to provide the most unbiased and fair information possible on my channel, I am willing to do a video with any construction automation company that completes a permitted house if they're able to send me enough footage for me to do a video on it. I go to as many as possible to film in person and get original footage but in order to give equal opportunity to international companies I may not be able to reach as easily, voiceover videos work great too. In fact, they're some of my most popular of all time. Here we've got triplet electrical boxes back to back and the printer navigated it with no issue. It even fills in the gaps fairly well at the top. It's generally pretty easy to tell how much progress they made in one day because of the difference in coloration of the wet concrete and the partially cured concrete. That white layer in the middle of the darker gray layers sticks out. It probably had a different level of chemicals in it, which made it cure or set at a different rate. There's no interior formwork to pour vertical columns, so I assume they'll be backfilling the entire portion of the wall with some type of structural and insulatory material. One benefit of building in Russia is that if you go far enough east, you can pretty much build whatever you want without worrying about permits. Check out how good the walls look when they're almost done. One of these crazy guys even climbed up the printer and took this video from the top of one of the vertical axes. They got excellent drone footage too, so I'm not sure this was necessary. As the wall approaches full height, you can see that design we were looking at before is actually a weaved or braided pattern. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it at that size. Overall, Smart Build has a great project on their hands, and it seems like their machine is working pretty well. You may have noticed throughout the video they were printing these steps in the house. It's cool to consider how many different things you may want to print. Alright, now let's get the bird's eye view. Looking from the top down, this house actually looks extremely similar to the house Mensa Corte designed in Germany. It has all the same rooms but with different shapes of the walls. And with those steps, I think it's pretty obvious we'll be getting a second floor. That structure at the bottom extruding from the wall is probably a fireplace, and the rectangles within the wall structure are probably going to be poured vertical columns with rebar inside to support the second floor. We didn't get a great look at their mixer pump system or hose management system, but 
this has been a really insightful look into how they're printing a building very similar to one that was done on a cobalt printer. Construction costs in Germany are notoriously very high. And in a rural area of Russia, construction costs are fairly cheap. So it's not a very fair comparison in those terms, but it is a similar print. So a side-by-side -side could certainly yield some interesting information, especially considering what Mensa Corte may have learned from their first experience.